Legere has been working at this university doing some type of genetic engineering of plants. You think he's in here? Lights are on. Somebody's home. Willie, go get him. My pleasure. Jay, please! You're not who? Whoever you're looking for? Well, then who the hell are you? I, I, I'm the guy who waters the plants. Name's Francis. Well, Francis, do you know this man? Jared. Yeah, he's the, um, scientist who used to work here. Used to? Yeah. Like I told the other guy that was looking for him, he's gone. Someone else is looking for Jared? Yeah, the blind guy. Kind of... Chinese looking. <laughs> Said his name was Mr. Um, Lee. I have absorbed all the files on Jared. Yes, everything you gave me from his childhood to the present. <laughs> no, he's quite an interesting man. There are seven people need to speak with. You get me those seven people, and I will deliver Jared. There are pretenders among us. I was taken from my family. 36,000. He's already demonstrating more talent than any of our others. How many people died because of what I thought of? Since I broke out, I spent every moment searching for my past. He's a pretender. A genius who can become anyone that he wants to be. The center wants him alive. Preferably. He defends the weak and abuse. Life's a gift. You a doctor? I am today. really be a sight. Why is that? You know, the, the blind leading the blind. <laughs> <laughs> Please, no more blind jokes, Miss Newton. You can call me Rachel. Ah, Rachel, and I am Mr. Lee. Uh, who, who's typing? Ah, her name is Tasha Han Piaulam. Anna, for short, my new associate. How exactly can I help you? I believe you once knew a man named Jared. Jared helped me after I lost my sight in a terrorist bombing. He's helped lots of people who've been victimized. He taught me to see again, so to speak. Why do you want to know about Jared? I have reason to believe that he is in trouble. I need you to help him. How can I help? I'm sure you realize that the loss of vision often nurtures deeper insight. And you feel I've developed this insight? But of course, that is why I brought you here. Please, tell me how Jared helped you and affected your life. I met Jared while I was still in therapy, not long after the bombing. I was drawn to him right from the start. Just like he felt my pain, my fears. Six, six. Stop counting. Oh. You're here. <laughs> <laughs> you must have stepped into the room. It's 11 steps to the door. I did. Very good. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. Why don't we go outside? Oh, no. I, I think I'd rather stay here. Rachel. You have to go outside sometime. 
I was supposed to work in my studio. But it was such a nice day, I decided to go on the rooftop of City Hall. That's what happened the last time I went outside. You were in the wrong place at the wrong time. That is not your fault. You can't stop living your life because of it. You know, when I had my eyes behind the camera, I could see things no one else could see. I can remember details of nearly every picture I ever took. That's ironic. They tell me he was there that day. And I must have seen the man that did this to me as he was setting his bonds. But as hard as I try, I can't remember. So, are you saying that Jared connected with you emotionally? Oh, it was more than that. It was almost like he became me. He seemed to know me, understand me more than I knew myself. The way he enabled me to face my life again was magical. Like an artist painting a picture, only Jared was a painter and, and I was the canvas. This is some kind of new therapy? Call it a simulation. I'm going to create an environment with all the stimuli you need to recreate an event. And for you to become someone. Who do you want me to become? Yourself. Oh, my camera. Touched this since the well, since the day at City Hall. Now I want you to develop that roll of film, pictures you took that day. Well, well, there's no film in it. I know. I want you to develop the pictures in your mind. I'm on the rooftop at City Hall. The natural light is at its perfect angle. The building is, is closed. It's Sunday. And I'm getting last minute shots from my gallery opening. Are you alone? I think. I, I don't see anyone. I don't. I don't see anyone, but I, I feel a, a tingle on the back of my neck. Go on. I don't see anyone, but I hear something. What do you hear? Footsteps walking quickly away. It's right before it happens. Rachel, do you see the bomb? It's only an instant before the flash. Do you see him? No. But I smell something. You smell him. It must be Alan. It, it's cologne. Thank you. Because of what he found in my mind, Jared was able to catch the bomber and help me find the courage to believe in myself again. That's very interesting. Uh, Anna, thank you for everything. My assistant, Anna, will take you home now. You know, you were right about insight, Mr. Lee. You don't want to help Jared. You want to catch him. But you won't succeed. He's too smart, even for you. What the hell is Mr. Lee? What does a blind Chinese man want with Jared anyway? The same thing anyone else would, with an advantage. Jared's a very valuable commodity. Question is, who wants to trade in him? None of this makes any sense. Well, let's go back to Jared's last lair, check the neighborhood, the airport, the train station, anywhere that someone might have seen this Mr. Lee. Okay. I'm also interested in finding out about our sightless friend. Keep Bridget up to speed on any new development. She's my liaison on this thing. Since when do I need a liaison?
to my own father. Since you're not the only ones after Jared. But don't worry, Angel. Shouldn't be that hard to catch a blind man. All you have to do is open your eyes. What's going on? People want to talk to you. So what's this, free egg roll night on the Ginzu? Ginzu, that's Japanese. A man of such erudition, a scholar, a physician. <laughs> this imprisonment must have reacquainted you with the low common man. <laughs> Perhaps that's his idea. Hmm. Dr. Fine. You may address me as Mr. Lee. Well, Mr. Lee, I don't know what this is about, but this is about an acquaintance of yours whom I'm searching for. His name is Jared. You gotta be kidding. For 18 months, I've been trying to tell people about Jared, but there's no trace of him. It's like he never existed. You seem frustrated. Frustrated? That psycho is the reason I'm spending the rest of my life in an 8x8 eight eight cell. Sue me if I'm frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Fine, you did bury an innocent man alive. You got a point? Yes. Jared, in his unique way, merely expose you to the rest of the world. What is one man's justice is another man's revenge. Yeah, well, a lot of good that's gonna do me now. Dr. Fine, would you like to see Jared in an environment worse than this? do that if you tell me what he did to you what he did he tried to kill me he tried to bury me alive <laughs> oh. Oh. trick or treat you scared the hell out of me well that is after all what this holiday is all about isn't it oh you're too late He's gone. Who's gone? Enrique. The young man you killed? What kind of sick prank are you trying to play? Well, this isn't a prank. It's a life lesson. You know, in some cultures they believe that the spirit of a man killed in anger returns to exact revenge upon his perpetrator. Spooky, huh? Get out of here. Oh, no, you can't leave, Dr. Fine. This is the day of the dead. And you, sir. Out of the special guest. Let me out of here, Jared! This isn't funny! I know. It would be awful to be buried alive. Especially with that on your shoe. <laughs> There's no reason to wake the dead. You're going to be joining them soon enough. Jared, please! Did Enrique discover that you had killed one of the research subjects that he recruited for you? Crazy! Uh, 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 no. That is not a very nice thing to say to a man with a shovel. Is it? Jared, please! You took an innocent homeless man and you turned him into your guinea pig. Someone to test your heart drug on. Someone that you didn't think would be missed if it didn't work. Well, it didn't work, did it? And someone did miss him. Enrique. So you buried him alive to save your research. Didn't you? Didn't you? Didn't you? Didn't you? Yes, yes, now let me out of here! 
screaming isn't going to help you conserve your oxygen. And believe me, you're going to need all you can get. No! No! No, Jared! Happy Halloween. Jared! No, Jared! Jared! <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> Perhaps that's his way of dispensing emotional justice. How's any of this gonna help you find him? Oh, you helped me a great deal already. You told me who he is. And what he is. And oh yes. I'll catch him. Mr. E here. After interviewing the first few subjects, I'm finding Jared even more challenging than initially anticipated. <laughs> Jared, I'm going to be able to do this. Sure you can. We'll keep on practicing. His desire to help other people and his determination for justice are unyielding. <laughs> but they will also prove to be his downfall. Thank you. You're welcome. In many ways, Jared is the most compassionate man I've met. It's almost as if it's his natural state of being. How is that, Miss Granger? He has a way of connecting with others, to their souls, in a way that I've never seen in any other person. It's ironic, really. Ironic? He can be so there for other people. And yet inside, he's so alone. I'll never forget the day he walked into my office. Mrs. Morgan, we may have a sighting on your daughter. If all goes well, you should have your arms around Catherine by tomorrow night. Thank you. God bless you, too. How can I help you? I don't know who I am. As I looked in his eyes, I could feel his pain, his sadness. So, Jared came to you for help. Yes. That's what I do. Reunite families, find missing children. I help people find their pasts so they can have a future. I see. I thought I'd seen it all until I heard Jared's story. I'm looking for my parents. Are they still alive? I don't know. I was never told the truth. Well, why not use the police database to initiate a search? I can't. Look, this is probably going to be hard to understand, but I don't have much time. 72 hours. Without a name? I have a picture. It's my mother. At least that's what I was told. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. So, you were able to give Jared the identity of his mother? No. These people came and took the information. They destroyed it before Jared even had a chance to see it. That must have decimated his soul. Actually, it seemed to inspire him to help other people who experienced a similar loss. Really? Over the last three years, he's helped me locate and reunite nine children with their families. And each time, he refuses to take any credit or recognition for what he's done. A very resilient soul. Like I said, Jared's the most compassionate human being I've ever met. You 
were right. It wasn't that hard to track Mr. Lee. I mean, most people you talk to have never seen an old blind Chinese guy. Well, at least not since Kung Fu. Well done, Grasshopper. <clears throat> I found out Mr. Lee's a pretty infamous guy in Hong Kong as well. Not only does he find people, but he makes them disappear in little pieces. Luke and I, our cards right will bring him in in one piece. Let's move. Get in position. Yes, sir, Mr. Lau. It's more difficult than I thought. I'm learning that Jared is very complex. Very yin and yang. Dangerous and yet in control. Full of great pain, but a source of healing to others. <laughs> yes. He's uh, capable of bringing justice against the powerful and yet showing mercy to the weak. He helps the lost to find themselves, but is unable to discover his own true nature. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? Anna? I think we have visitors. We need to move. Patience, Parker. Sweepers aren't even in position yet. Lee has no idea we're out here. You start stumbling around, you're gonna blow it off. I know exactly what I'm doing. We're gonna go in and bring out the blind man. Let me show you how this is done. Shaolin priest. What are you talking about? Look, you know, look for he cannot be seen. Felt for he cannot be touched. Oh, get a life, Kato. What's this? Braille. Great. This you've forgotten. What is it, sir? Names of people involved with Jared. Why? He's been interviewing them. How would Mr. Lee know about them in the first place? Someone at the center. Bert? I want you to trust all calls coming into and out of this warehouse. Let's find out who Mr. Lee is working for and why. Okay. Sydney, who do you think they are? Whoever they are, these must be some very special people. Love the shoes. Thank you very much. Do you always wear that get-up? Well, I can see you don't fully appreciate the incredible burden of my responsibility. You'll have to excuse Mr. Lyle. It's not a fact. But I am, Bernie. And I do appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us. Well, I always got time to spend with a pretty lady. <laughs> Tell us, what did Mr. Lee want to know about Jerry? How I felt about him, minute by minute, from the very instant we met. Now, don't you little ladies forget, come see my show tonight. There's no cover, there's no minimum, and there's free hot hors d'oeuvres, huh? <laughs> I'll see y'all later. Bye. All right. Thank you very much. Hey, Teddy Bear, you come to rub elbows with the king of rock and roll? No, I'm trying to understand this. You dress up in a rented costume and you pretend to be a dead singer? Singer. Son, do you have any idea who I am? Well, actually, I would have... You are looking at a national monument. Mount Rushmore in Blue Suede Shoe. There's not a human being on God's green earth that has ever demanded the attention and respect of the man you are looking at at this very moment. 
Hey, Bernie, someday at the craft table says we'll give you five bucks to boost his wife. I'll be right there. Well, my fan's back in. I must go. Thank you very much. To tell you the truth, I'd read Jared all wrong at first. How so? Well, just like I told Mr. Lee, turned out that he was the only person who really cared about what I was going through. Hey. Well, welcome to the Heartbreak Hotel. <laughs> what are you doing here? You should be on stage. Oh, no, there, there's no more stage for the king. The casino fired me. Did it have something to do with that bird thing? Bird thing? The goose. <laughs> no. No, they said they'd had complaints about the show. So I put on 20, 30 pounds. You think it's easy being the idol of millions? I would guess no. Well, you're damn right it isn't. I sacrificed everything. I did it because I, I loved it. It's what the people wanted. I just wish some of those casino bigwigs could spend one hour wearing the cape. Huh? Just one hour. I'll tell you what, they, they'd walk away singing a different tune. I can guarantee you. Couldn't you get a job at another casino? No, buddy boy. After 24 years of making people smile, singing the songs, and spreading the good vibrations, afraid it's the end of the line for the king. We had one hell of a ride, though, didn't we? I bet you did. Well, look, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm spilling my guts now. I don't even know your name. Jared. Felson. Bernie Baxley. Well, it's nice to meet you, Bernie Baxley. Thanks. Jared? I'm scared. Of what? Yeah. Jared helped me to face my fears. To find me again. I, I gotta admit, he, uh, Kind of rubbed off on me a little bit. But I tell you, I think I rubbed off on him a little bit, too. Well, thank you very much. After that, I left Vegas. Never looked back. And thanks to Jared, I've got my own place in Branson, where the King's legacy is kept alive 363 days a year, closed only for New Year's and, of course, the King's birthday. Ow. I threw out my hip dancing about a year ago. But Jared had taught me that you got to keep on adapting. You know, keep, keep looking for new and, and better ways to move and groove forward. So I broadened my repertoire. Thought maybe I'd treat you folks to, well, just a taste of my new act. Ladies and gentlemen, please, welcome to the stage. Tiny King. Huh? <laughs> hey, TK. Don't you want to say something to the pretty lady? Ooh, you look better than a fried peanut butter and banana sandwich. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so, get him out of here before I step in his blue suede face. Yes, Miss Parker. Excuse me, King. Yeah. It's time to leave the building. Ah. Got a TCB? You did say these people must be special. What the hell is going on, Sydney? Lee has been interviewing every one of those people about their emotional connection to Jared in order to anticipate his next move. Mr. Parker. What is it? I traced the last call from Mr. Lee's warehouse to the center, and you won't believe where it ended up. Spit it out, birds. Oh. Went to your father's office. Yes. 
the next subject may be reluctant to cooperate. Let me bring him in. <laughs> Violence was not on your resume. <laughs> I'll have to write a new one. <laughs> much of a mechanic, but I'm pretty good with my hands. You have met my assistant, Anna. Met her? She kidnapped me. Oh, really? <laughs> Please, sit down. I don't feel like sitting down. Oh. Excuse my urgency, but it is important that I know about your relationship with Jared. Really? Well, I'd like to know about your relationship with Jared. Mr. Lyle, in life, it is primary that one knows his position. And you, sir, are not in position to ask questions. Look, I don't know what you're up to. But I think it's time somebody taught you some manners. <laughs> Did I hurt you? It is not only with sight that one sees. Let me help you. Once again, Mr. Lyle, go sit down. And tell me a story. Mm. What do you want to know? I want to know what motivates Jared. Why he risks himself to help others. Why he runs but does not vanish. Well, why do you think I can help you? Kuchi, 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 kuchi. <laughs> because you have a very unique relationship with Jared. You did try to kill him, did you not? All in the interest of science. <laughs> It really wasn't my idea anyway. <laughs> I believe you also kidnapped Jared, huh? Desperate times call for desperate measures. Desperate times call for desperate measures, Anna. So you weren't content just to kidnap Jared, were you? You also have to shoot his brother and kill him. That was an accident. Pure and simple. This is beautiful. It's just one big happy family. It's, it's the end of the line, Lyle. There's no place left for you to run. I'm disappointed in you, Jared. You know me better than that. Drop the cannon, kid. Shoot him, you moron! Shut up! Stay back. Or I put a very large hole in Big Brother. Kyle, threats and pain. That's all you've ever offered us. You stole our lives and you killed our spirit. Now you think you could threaten us with death? It doesn't matter, Lyle. Because we never made a difference anyway. I'll kill him. I swear I will. And then I'll kill you. I'll do this, little brother. <laughs> Oh. 
there's another part about what drives Jared that I, I don't understand. And that is... <laughs> why, after all you've done to him, he has not killed you. After all, he is more resourceful and intelligent than you are. Maybe he just likes me. Not. <laughs> Shall we start from the beginning? All over again, huh? Where the hell is Lyle? I don't know. But he seemed genuinely disturbed over the revelation that Mr. Lee is in contact with your father's office. Well, we're not waiting any longer. Let's go ahead and talk to this guy. Mm. Hi, Joe. My name is Sydney. This is Miss Parker. Miss Parker? You sure look familiar. I have one of those faces. Listen, Jr. it's very important that you tell us exactly what Mr. Lee wanted to know about Jared. Is Jared in some kind of trouble? He might be. I'll do anything to help him. He saved my life twice. Once before I even met him. JR, honey, sweetie, can you hear me? JR? He's in shock. He's still breathing. He's hypoglycemic. When was the last time he ate? Um, he had cereal for breakfast three, four hours ago. JR, come on, honey. What do you think you're doing? I need to stabilize his blood sugar. You stick this in your mouth. I want you to let it dissolve, okay? Good boy. Mr. Lee seemed real interested in the fact that Jared knew I was sick. No heart. I needed a transplant. My mom had pretty much given him hope that I'd get one in time. Until Jared came into our lives. How was he feeling? There. He has a heart condition. I noticed the bluish tint to his fingertips and his lips. I'd say by the looks of it. You're a very sick boy. Are you a doctor? Not at the moment. Why hasn't he had a heart transplant? Because he's on a waiting list. Because he has AB negative blood, which is very rare. It only happens in certain families. One in 300,000. I know. I have it too. You said Jared saved your life twice. He found me a heart. You stay with me, little brother. I'm, I'm gonna get you to a hospital. It's too late. Jared. How'd you say that? Look at me. Come on. Think about all the good times we're gonna have together. I'm sorry, Jared. For what? For everything. Ever since the transplant, he calls. Not just to check up on me, but to see how I'm really doing. Jared's like the older brother that I never had. Mr. Lee seemed to think that was real important. Thank you. 
Thank you, Jr. Sam will take you home. Come on, gentlemen. Mr. Lee's really narrowing it down. Compassion, empathy, desire for justice. All the things that make Jared, Jared. Do you think he'll be able to anticipate Jared's next move? To actually catch him? Unless we get there first. Miss Parker? Miss Parker? <clears throat> about that phone call from Lee to your father's office? What about it? Well, it wasn't actually from Mr. Parker. Well, did it go to his office or didn't it? Yes, te I mean, technically, yes. Technically? Well, there was a second phone line recently installed. Your father's sweet. Seems now he's sharing his office with someone else. And I traced the call from Mr. Lee to that new line. And just whose new line might that be, as if I didn't know? Brigitte. Play the mask. Oh, well, she's not there. I, uh, <clears throat> I, I just intercepted another call between her and Mr. Lee. She just left in a limo. Mr. Lee's limo. They're going to get Jerry. We're going to get Jared now. So tell me how you found him. Simple. By interviewing people whose lives Jared has touched, I've been able to understand how he thinks, and more importantly, how he feels. We were able to break the code, the pattern of his behavior. Jared has a need to defend those abused by power. Because of this need, he is drawn to predictable situations. Such as? Those that are related to the trauma of his childhood and the guilt he feels over the abuse of his work. Anna has extensively researched potential scenarios that would attract him. We've successfully isolated the one that will lead us to him. It's a shame my future stepchildren won't be there to share the moment. <laughs> You're deliciously naughty. <laughs> Why, thank you, Mr. Lee. A blind Chinese guy, a bimbo, and a limousine. How hard can that be to find? Two and a half years we've been chasing Jared, and that bitch is going to bring him in. Fly, you're all right. You look terrible. You ought to see the other guy. Bad hair day? I was abducted by several of Lee's men. They obviously got the best of me, but I put a whole lot of hurting on him in the process. Lee questioned me for hours, but finally gave up. Had his enforcers drop me off in the middle of nowhere. Mm. Well, you can thank Bridget for your quality time with Lee. Brigitte? Mm. He's working for her. Yeah, she's going to bring Jared in. Well, not if we get there first. I've triangulated the signal from Brigitte's cell phone, and this should lead us right to Brigitte and to Mr. Lee. Oh. And they'll lead us right to Jared. <laughs> Thank you, Jared. You're welcome. Abner gets to come home where he should have been all the time. How can we ever repay you for all you have done for oh, us? This is repayment enough. Oh. Good luck, Abner. Ironic place to find Jared. A genius at a facility for the mentally challenged. Yes, Jared has discovered that many of the residents have been intentionally misdiagnosed. The director keeps them here in order to defraud their insurance and their parents. They're trapped, prisoners in an institution that denies them their freedom. And Jared's here to liberate them. How noble. Wait.
Alex. What the hell are you doing here? Good to see you too. Where is he? I'm supposed to bring him in. I tell you, are nobody's cutting me out of this, least of all you. Stop your argument. We must get to Jarrett now. He's gone. You have a gift for the obvious. He knew we were coming. He's known all along. Intercepted your memo. What memo? From Bridget to Daddy, requesting the unique services of Mr. Lee to catch Jared. He couldn't have done this alone. You blew it, Angel. Someone informed him of our presence. people you've helped it was about time that someone helped you well you did took a lot of courage you bought me the time i needed i'd do it again in a heartbeat I mean, what you did for my family and my nephew i'm the one should be thanking you i hope someday we'll meet again i hope so too mm -hmm.